Welcome to Laravel API development with Vue.js single page application from scratch. The following episode is going to be an excerpt from the full course now available on Udemy. If you're interested in developing robust Laravel APIs with a front end built on Vue and Tailwind CSS, then this is the course for you. We go into great detail talking about things like authentication, testing, Tailwind CSS, Vue.js, Laravel, PHP unit, and so much more. So I hope you'll join me for the full course. Go ahead and click on the link in the description to get sent to the Udemy page where you can purchase the full course. I hope you enjoy this episode. Now that we have our basic test working for adding a new contact to our application, let's take it a step further. So let's pull open our features test and then open the contacts test one more time and let's go ahead and add some more fields. Of course, name is not the only thing that we need to store. So let's go ahead and add a couple of other fields. So at the very minimum, a contact is going to need a name. They're going to need an email. Just add a test email.com. They are also going to need a birthday. So we'll say birthday column is going to be equal to 05 14 1988. And I'm going to show you some cool stuff on how to do dates, specifically how to turn them into carbon instances. Pretty cool stuff. Finally, they're going to need a company that they're going to be associated with. And this is just simply going to be a string of a company. We're just using this to have a couple of fields that we can play with. So if we ran this, of course, what else do we expect? But why don't we fetch that contact instead? So let's say contact, go ahead and fetch me that first one that is in the database. Now there is only one in the database. So of course, this is going to be the same one that we just added. Because remember that refresh database gives us a clean database after every single test. So we can change this from contact all to just simply be contact. And then let's go ahead and make some further assertions. Let's assert equals test name if we were to get the contact's name. Also, we expect test at email.com if we get their email. So this is basically asserting that we received all of the appropriate data back from our database. Let's say birthday. And finally, ABC string is going to be the company name. So we'll change that to company. All right, let's go ahead and run our test with these changes. And then we get the first error, assert count, meaning I couldn't assert the count because it is not countable. Of course, when you run count first, what returns back is not a collection anymore. So we can actually safely remove this altogether because if this passes, we actually don't need this line anymore. So let's get rid of it altogether. Let's run our test again. Okay, we failed asserting that null matches the expected test. And this is for a couple of different reasons. It's at this line right here. Of course, there is no email field in our database. And we are also not saving this into our database. So why don't we do that now? Let's start with the migration. So let's go to the create contacts table. And we're going to need a new string for email. And we know we're going to need a new string for birthday. And then we're going to need a new string for company. Then inside our controller, contacts controller, we're also going to have to do something very similar. So name, email, and then birthday and company. Okay, let's run our test now. And we're back to green. Great. So we are taking care of adding each of these fields and mapping them to the appropriate place. But we're still not doing any validation at all. As a matter of fact, if we were to actually send this in with only test name, it should fail. So why don't we make a test to prove that that does not work yet. So let's say a name is required. Now we're going to copy a lot of this setup here. And then we're going to do a refactor to show you how to clean this test up a little bit. So if we were to post and simply omit the name, what do I expect here? I expect there to be a validation error for this post. So let's go ahead and save this response. And then we can assert on that response. So let's say response assert session has errors for the name because we expect there to be a validation error. So what else can we test? Well, we can also test that no contact got added to our database. We could do that by simply saying this assert count of zero inside 
our contacts table when we fetch all of the records. Does that make sense? So if we were to post this and we get a validation error, well, there should not be anything inside our database. Fair enough. All right, so let's go ahead and run this test. So PHP unit dash dash filter, and then we'll just filter this to this one test. Now scrolling back up reveals that we have an integrity constraint violation. Basically, we got all the way through and tried to actually insert this record in our database. But of course, our database said, wait a minute, that name field is required and you didn't pass in any data for name. So of course, we know this is because we're not doing any sort of validation. So let's take care of that now. Let's go into our controller and let's go ahead and start validating our data. So let's say data is equal to request validate and then validate of course is going to take an array. This array is going to take the shape of each of the fields that we're trying to validate and they're each going to have a set of rules. So we can actually copy this array right here and we'll modify it. So instead of request all of that, let's just get rid of this altogether and just simply put empty strings for now. And instead of passing in an array to here, we'll pass in data. Data, of course, is coming from this that we're saving right here. So the request validate returns an array of data that has been validated. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go back here, run our test again, and we should get the exact same error because yes, we are validating, but we haven't told Laravel that the name is required. So let's do that now. So the name is required. Let's run our test again. And now it says the given data is invalid. We're getting the validation exception. However, the reason why the test is not passing is because we have exception handling turned off. Yet, we are kind of depending on it. So why don't we remove this top line here and run our test again. And sure enough, we are at green. Awesome. All right, let's do another one for email now. So the email is required. Let's write a new test. Email is required very basic setup as this, except that this time we will have a name, but no email. We'll just say test name. Okay, let's run this test instead. PHP unit dash dash filter. And sure enough, we failed asserting that there was a key for error. Of course, we're not doing much in terms of the email being required. Let's go ahead and hit required on that. Let's go back here and run our test again. And we get fail asserting that the name is missing. We must have made a mistake here. Of course, we forgot to change from name to email. Email is the one that we're actually trying to validate. So let's run that test again. And sure enough, it's back to green. Let's run all of the tests and all of the tests are also passing. So as you're starting to see, this is starting to get a little bit repetitive. So why don't we take a couple of minutes to refactor this code to be less repetitive.